Hello and welcome to this AWS Media and Entertainment video tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can use input switching with AWS Elemental Media Live to easily add production value to your live event. I'm Ivan Geraghty and I'm a Solutions Architect Manager at AWS, specializing in our suite of media services. AWS Elemental Media Live is a broadcast grade live video service which allows users to add multiple video inputs to a channel and switch between the different video inputs using Media Live's schedule feature. You can create an input switching schedule before the Media Live channel is started, if you know the exact time in, in the future you require the input switches to occur. Alternatively, you can start the Media Live channel and then dynamically switch between the inputs by creating input switching actions in the Media Live schedule as you require. Using Media Live scheduled dynamically in this manner is useful when a live event has unpredictable timing, such as a live music concert or a live sporting event. Let's look at an example input switching workflow. The live streaming diagram shows that Media Live is ingesting a video file as its active input. This is a common use case for live events where you start the live stream ahead of time with a looping file input and switch to the live input once the main event is about to get underway. Doing this allows you to check that the end-to-end -end platform is working as expected before the main event starts. The looping file in this scenario is normally informative. It tells viewers that an event is about to start. It can also be promotional, informing viewers of products and services and other upcoming events. When the event is about to get underway, we need to switch input so that the live input becomes the active input. This is done by creating an input switch action in Media Live's schedule feature. The input switching action can be created in the AWS console, the AWS CLI, or via an SDK. When Media Live processes the input switching action in its schedule, it will switch inputs, ingesting the live input which the end viewer will then consume. Media Live's schedule supports three main types of input switching action. You can categorize input switches according to the start types of the switch. A fixed input switch starts at a specific time. Fixed switches use UTC time. They don't use time code of the input. An immediate input switch starts as soon as possible. This type of switch is more like a fixed switch than a follow switch because it interrupts the current input. A follow switch starts when the previous input has ended, when Media Live has reached the end of the file. To successfully work with multiple input channels, remember the following. The schedule exists inside the channel. The schedule does not exist separately from the channel. On the console, you'll find the schedule in the details page for an existing channel. You can also query the schedule via the AWS CLI or via an SDK. There is no implicit switching with a multiple input channel. You must add input switches to the schedule to instruct the channel to switch. A channel that contains more than one input won't switch to the next input in the list of inputs unless the schedule specifies to do so. There is no main input with multiple input channels you must think of the input attachments as a pool of inputs, all with equal status. There isn't one input that is the main input that the channel returns to when it has nothing else to ingest. Now I'll demonstrate some input switches on my live streaming channel. As per the diagram, I have a looping file source configured as my first input and a live event stream as my second input. I will create an input switching schedule in the AWS console before I start the channel so you can see an example of scheduling input switches at fixed times. Once those switches have occurred, I will then create further input switches using the AWS CLI. Note that if you want to control Media Live via the AWS CLI or through an SDK, you will need programmatic access to the Media Live service. This tutorial assumes that you have configured your IAM permissions and can interact with Media Live via the AWS console, the AWS CLI, or an SDK. In the Media Live console, I'll click on the menu on the left of the screen and select inputs. As you will see, I have two inputs. One is an MP4 file called AWS Elemental Loop, 
and the other is my live input called Livestream, which is an AWS Elemental Media Connect input. Next, we will look at my channel. Note the channel ID at this point because you will need it later when you work with the AWS CLI. The details page lists the input attachments for a channel in the order they were attached. Note down the names for your inputs as the input names are required when creating an input switching schedule. My channel is currently idle, however I can still create an input switching schedule that specifies switching times in the future by using fixed input switches. Fixed input switches use UTC time. You can confirm the current UTC time in the timeline view of the schedule. Now let's create a fixed input switch. Click on the create button, then name the action. The action name has to be unique, so I recommend that you number your action names. Leave the start type as fixed, then enter the date and time you wish the switch to occur. Select the action type drop down menu, click on the input switch and choose the input you want to. Click create to complete the process. Next, I'm going to create another fixed input switch, switching back from the live stream to my looping file. I'll follow the exact same process as before, but this time I'll schedule the second switch to occur after the first switch has completed. Note that my action name closely relates to the action I am scheduling and it's numbered, as during a live event you may need to switch to and from the same input multiple times. But the action name parameter needs to be unique for each switch you schedule. Now that I've created my input switching schedule, I'll start the Media Live channel. Whilst the channel is starting up, I'll take the opportunity to show the schedule action settings page for one of the input switches. It displays the action name, the action type, the timing information, if present, and the JSON body of the API call that is made when you create the input switch. The information can be useful to reference when managing your live stream. We can also access Media Live's schedule via the AWS CLI. I'll show you this with the Describe Schedule command. It will return all items in the schedule. As you can see, running this command has returned the two input switches I created in the console earlier, listing the action names, input references, and switch timings for each of the input switches. There will be a QR code at the end of this video that will take you to the Media Live CLI command line reference document. Switching back to the Media Live console, we can see the channel is now running. The pipeline details confirm the active input and the switch action, which is currently initial channel input, our MP4 looping file. Let's look at the output of the live stream. This is what the end users would see, the looping MP4 file. We can watch the input switch taking place by viewing the live stream and seeing the content switch from the looping MP4 file to the live sports stream. Let's monitor the second input switch we created earlier, switching back from the live stream to the looping file. Note that the value of the active input and the switch action have updated and the switch action name is unique. We can also view this switch by watching the stream change from the live support speed back to the looping file. Next we are going to look at creating the input switches via the AWS CLI. To create an input switch via the CLI, you need to first create a JSON formatted text file that contains your input switching parameters. Let's look at one I created earlier. This file contains the channel ID of your Media Live channel, the input switch type, immediate in this example, the action name of the switch, and the name of the input that we want to switch to. With the text file ready to use, we can schedule the input switch using the batch update schedule CLI command. Note that this command references the JSON formatted text file with the switching parameters. If you generate an invalid JSON received error message when you try scheduling the switch, it is probably due to an issue with the formatting of your JSON text file. If this does happen, you can use an online JSON formatter tool to check your file for errors. My batch update schedule command was successfully processed. Back in the console, we can see the input switch I scheduled via the AWS CLI being actioned. Note the switch action parameter, switch to live 2, matches the action name in the JSON formatted text file used in the CLI command. Let's schedule another input switch via the CLI, but this time back to the looping file. Take a look at the JSON parameters. Again, we are defining the channel ID, the type of input switch action, the action name, and the name of the input we want to switch to. I'll action the CLI command and we expect a create response for a successful update to the schedule. 
The details page in the console reflects the active input status of our latest input switch as we switch back to the looping file source. Let's also look at the schedule view in the console. The schedules action list now contains the four input switches that we created. Two fixed input switches built in the console and two immediate input switches created through the CLI commands. Now let's talk about deleting schedule actions via the CLI. This means using formatted JSON text file and the batch update schedule CLI command again. Looking at my delete text file, you can see that I only need to reference the channel ID and the action name. In this example, I am deleting the switch to live 01 schedule. If your CLI command is successful, you will receive a response that confirms the delete details. You will also see the delete reflected in the schedule page of the console. You can also delete schedule actions directly from the console. Check the box next to the action that you want to delete, then click on the Schedule Actions drop-down menu and select the Delete option. Do know that you cannot delete a schedule action if that action is associated with the current input Media Live is ingesting. In this example, I would not be able to delete the switch to file 02 action as this is the active input Media Live is using. Thank you for your time. I hope you found this video tutorial useful. Please check out our other AWS Media and Entertainment video tutorials. If you would like further information on the input switching or Media Live CLI command, use the QR codes displayed here to access the relevant AWS documentation pages. Thanks again, and see you at the next video tutorial.